On this edition of Bay Area Bountiful, we'll explore sustainable nonprofits. First, we'll see how children are learning to protect the earth with the help of environmental volunteers. Then we'll visit a coastal stewardship organization engaging the community. And in its 50th year, a peninsula nonprofit born out of the early environmental movement is now greener than ever and gearing up for its next half century. It's all coming up next on Bay Area Bountiful. Bay Area Bountiful is made possible in part by Rocky the Free Range Chicken and Rosie the Original Organic Chicken. The Sonoma County Agricultural Preservation and Open Space District, Made Local Magazine and Sonoma County Go Local, and through the generous support of Sonoma Water. Cultivate. Celebrate. Connect. Environmental volunteers, also known as EVs, believe that all children deserve to learn about the natural world through personal exploration so they can become responsible stewards of the earth. They believe that what children appreciate and love, they will protect. EVs lead field trips and coordinate classroom visits to introduce students to the natural world. Since they started in 1972, more than 400,000 children and adults have explored natural science learning with the EVs. In this story, we accompany them on this journey. Even though they live right next to natural habitats of world significance, many Bay Area school children are unaware of the environmental treasures that surround them. There's something about when a kid figures it out, when all of a sudden they get it. I had a boy who before we went to the tide pools thought that the sand on the beach had been brought by people who brought it in buckets. One of the docents was able to explain to this young man why there's sand on the beach. I want them to have an appreciation for nature. I want them to have an understanding of science. I want them to be happy in all that the world has to offer. I saw a sea star and it was really cool. A lot of crabs. Yeah, we saw crabs. Some were alive and they were small. And we found foam that was created by air. Yeah, because animals are pretty amazing to see. Since 1972, the environmental volunteers, known as EVs, have provided dedicated community members to share their passion for nature with local students. The thing I like best about the EVs is they walk in and the kids don't see them as volunteers, they see them as scientists, they see them as teachers. Tell me what you think it looks like. It looks like a special type of bird's beak. Kind of so when they interact in the classroom, they have a leader that they can turn to who's an expert, and they know that these people are experts. Look at the difference between, uh, what, what is this? Harbor seal and the sea lion. Probably for the last seven years, we've done the squid dissection. So this has turned into a rite of passage. So third graders, fourth graders, younger siblings all know about the squid dissection. They're always looking for, when do we get to dissect the squid? When we have the classroom presentation and they walk in, they are so amazed. We expose them to things that they wouldn't get in the normal course of the day. Talk about whales. This is a vertebrae. The environmental volunteers bring in gigantic forms of animal skulls, and the kids are looking at this, and all of a sudden they see the enormity of these, these creatures, and they're just, they're amazed. So this is what a plastic bag could look like floating around to a, a, a marine animal. It looks like a jellyfish. It looks like this, right? Yep. And if I were a sea turtle and loved jellyfish, what do you think I might do? You might eat it and then you might die. Right. Not every student is a book learner. So when children are, are touching and feeling and, and seeing things and you're talking and then they've got someone who is an expert on it standing next to them, guiding them through the process, they learn so much more and they walk away with a real understanding of what they've seen. To reinforce classroom learning, the EVs take kids on relevant field trips. The forest and foothills, one of the places we go is Stevens Creek. Field trips follow up the classroom activities 
Every field trip has had a, some sessions in class where they go through some of the science and then they get to come out here and actually hopefully see many of these things in person that they've learned about in class. Right there, see all these, little, each one of these little things, each one of these has a seed, okay. For a lot of them, in fact, this is an, a whole new environment that they haven't spent much time in. We found all kinds of interesting mushrooms. They're learning about the old stumps and the leaves decompose into nice rich soil that the future plants grow in. We found wild turkey out there. That's about the biggest bird I think we'll see out here. Where do, they, where do the woodpeckers store their food? Their that hole? Tree. That hole? You see one over there? One of the wonderful things about the EVs is getting this chance to do these field trips. You listen to the kids at the end of the day. Wow, can we be out here for three more hours? This is the greatest field trip ever. We saw a lizard. He looked like a brown and white. And turkey. We saw a mushroom and turkey. So we go out to the Balins and see the wetlands and marshlands ecology out there. I feel so fortunate to be with the environmental volunteers. <laughs> Studies show that children in this digital day and age just are not spending as much time outdoors. And I think with that comes a loss of the connection you can make to your natural surroundings. So anything that I can do to get them more enthused about their world around them, I will do it. Oh, 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 guys! Guys, oh, you it's see? one of those things that opens and closes. A few years ago, the EVs refurbished a derelict building at the Palo Alto Baylands, transforming it into the Eco Center. It now serves as their home base. I think the Eco Center is very important to the community in that it helps bring people to this area that they might not otherwise come to. It's a fabulous place to come in and visit. They have the touch screens, which are interactive and there's many bird mounds to see. And I think it's very interesting for children to come in and they can actually see the mounds, but then you can encourage them to go outside and they can go out and see the real thing rather than some of the mounds. It's, it's a wonderful place to stop in and visit. Is a huge mouth. Does your fish have a huge mouth? Nice. Wait, oh, this we is have found our fish. The top's melt. Very nice. Right, so here's our leopard shark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick it up and then I'm going to turn it upside down so we can feed. So I want you to see its mouth. You can see its mouth and how it's at the bottom right there. It doesn't feel the same. Scales are Does it feel different? Marine ecology, we go to Fitzgerald Marine Reserve, get to see the tide pools and then whatever critters that we find out there. It was amazing just to go out and see when the kids got off the bus and they're like, okay, so where are the sea lions? And you know, well, you know the difference between a seal and a sea lion. And they were referring back to the information they had learned in the classroom. This is the first time a bunch of these kids have ever even been on a freeway. And so the EVs bring this opportunity to this whole spectrum of schools. It's a big, exciting experience for all of them. It's called a mossy chitin, and uh, he's one of the most primitive marine animals. They go away with a lot of excitement and interest because they actually see this stuff they've been learning about in class. You know, you go back and you get the thank you notes from the kids. You know, dear John, thank you for taking us on this hike. I love to find the banana slug and see where it lives. They take away all these excitements. And to touch and feel and see and hear are, are so critical to these children in terms of learning and appreciating. It's gonna affect them for the rest of their life. The environmental volunteers have a very important charter. They are simply trying to bring a love of nature and learning to school children. And these school children are our future. To learn more about how the EVs foster a love of learning and nature in kids, check out their website, www.evals.org. Pacific Beach Coalition is a growing community of Earth heroes, teeming with passion for protecting and preserving the health of our ocean, beaches, wildlife, and coastal environment. 
they have created a model for sustainable environmental stewardship and kinship among all ages through advocacy, education, community building, and citizen action in the Bay Area. When people arrive to lend a hand at an early morning work party with the Pacific Beach Coalition, they see right away they're in for a lot more than just a day at the beach. The Pacific Beach Coalition is a network of volunteers who essentially love the beach and the ocean and are really committed and passionate about taking care of the beach and ocean. Anything organic, right, is alive, was alive, stays. All the way from San Francisco, all the way down to San Gregorio. Beach cleanups are fun, and you see um, groups of uh, middle schoolers, high schoolers, young kids. Depending on the size we're expecting, we'll set up several tables then we just always start out with an introduction and a welcome. Be careful with the tide line, right? Yeah. It's pretty yeah. rough. The wonderful thing about the Beach Coalition is basically we're a group of volunteers who really want to help the earth and ocean by educating and inspiring people to take action. Then you're both that you have a lot of Candy cane. <laughs> Jim and I started in 1998, and prior there had been someone saying, why are you taking care of this beach? It's a dump. And sort of looking around and saying, you're kind of right, let's get busy. When you do it by yourself, sometimes because you can only carry so much and you find just you know, a couple handful of trash, but when you join a group, then you actually see how much a lot of people can do and accomplish. And at the end of the day, when you see that you, you know, picked up thousands of cigarette butts and a couple hundred pounds of trash, it makes everybody feel good about making a difference. And then when they come back, we really put the participants to work. Trash! Look, we can dump your bucket! They have to separate recycling and cigarette butts and trash and we count litter, we count the trash that we find. And we discovered that for over years, the number one thing picked up every time was cigarette butts. If you want to compare numbers, we, we would do a cleanup with four people in 98, and now we have, what, 7,000 cleaning up on an Earth Day. Oh, we get people from all over the Bay Area. Uh, so Pacific Inns, but far beyond. I, so I heard from someone from Ronert Park, uh, probably Fremont, uh, San Jose I heard from, to come help give back at the beach. And um, so this is a group effort. We've been doing this for 23 years and it started out as mostly just a Pacific Inn thing, but it's grown. And we have naturalists there now that help volunteers educate them. Well, the fewer single-use plastics we use, the better, because then they... They really are impressed by the amount of plastic that we find. There's, it should be a straw in here because we see things like this, which is all the plastic we found, even on this beach. This plastic breaks down into itty-bitty pieces and is left in the sand, in the ocean, and can also be ingested by birds and fish. And of course, we eat fish, so it's going right back up the food chain. And we want to make sure that this area is protected. And snowy plovers live in little divots in the sand, and they hunker down in there, and they're very hard to see. And we want to make sure that they have a chance to survive. So being able to really see our progress and our growth, all of that helps for us to spread the message. Earth Hero! This means you never ever litter, and you pick up litter when you see it. We communicate to City Council, to the California Coastal Commission, and we use that data to really inform our work. Then we learned about native habitat. 
So now we have habitat restoration. We're gonna be planting some native coastal buckwheat that feeds the native plants and insects that would grow here. We planted native plants at Lindemar State Beach and we've transformed that beach. We're blessed uh, to have a lot of schools and teachers that really wanna get their kids engaged. It was just amazing to watch high school kids work together. In addition, we have businesses sign on to do a corporate give back day and they may bring anywhere from 25 to 50 employees out to do a team building event. We all care about the environment and so the more people that can come over to learn about the snowy plovers, learn about the native habitat, take what they learn here and go home and bring native habitat to their own places is really important. I'd like to say thank you to all the volunteers that come from all over the state to come to the beach to help clean up the beaches, to restore habitat, I'd like to thank the businesses that send their teams out here to help us clean our beaches, restore habitat, and learn about marine debris and, and native habitat. And for them to come and learn about this, to go home to make changes, is huge. Your turn. I encourage everybody who wants to give back to the community, give back to the coast, to come join us. All of our work is designed to give people an experience so that they can learn and that they can go home and now participate and help the beach and the ocean and our environment by planting native plants or by picking up litter or by reducing litter. Members of the Beach Coalition witness the joy that people have when they clean an area. We know that we have the power to make a better world. And I invite everybody to make a splash by ending trash. On the occasion of its 50th anniversary, we survey the wide range of activities conducted by Actera, a Palo Alto nonprofit that brings people together to create local solutions for a healthy planet. In the face of daunting environmental changes, their science-based approach instills hope while building community. The name Actera stands for Action for the Planet. We see some of the many ways that action is taking place. Silicon Valley employees who want to make their workspaces more sustainable roll up their sleeves twice a year to share tips and best practices at a noontime meeting facilitated by the environmental nonprofit Actera. Where do I put yeah. this like or if it looks classic, but it's compostable, so. Green team members come together through our Silicon Valley Green Team Network to participate in workshops, and to have networking time with each other so that they can troubleshoot ideas and avoid reinventing the wheel. All right, so I hope everybody had a really productive brainstorming session. We definitely did in the food group. It was excellent. A lot of great ideas generated. Everyone here is a volunteer who wants to make their companies greener. Actera shares ways they can take that action for the planet. And I uh, was part of the group that talked about food. So one of the main things we talked about was, I mean, renewable energies and switching from gas to electric. And for we want to help people take actions so that they don't feel despair about this climate crisis that we're in. How did you transit? What transit they should take? Just to Actera is a 50-year-old environmental nonprofit based in Palo Alto. And our basic philosophy is to help people become better stewards of the environment. Actera has been around for 50 years, and you can't be around this long without taking a stand for what you believe in. We have amazing staff, we have amazing partners. We all feel the urgency of what's going on with climate impacts right now. 
Actera is uh, operating in primarily San Mateo and Santa Clara counties, but for some of our programs like the Business Environmental Awards, it is over the seven county Bay Area. The Business Environmental Awards program uh, recognizes really cutting edge sustainable business practices that are being implemented by businesses large and small. So often businesses are in a negative spotlight. Here's a very uh, positive look at the leadership that business can play. We all want environmental sustainability. These are rare times where companies are willing to, to share their secrets. Though Actera has earned the respect of the biggest Silicon Valley businesses, it has an even longer track record, empowering individuals to take action at the grassroots level. Uh, Actera has a very wide reach into the very many communities that we have in the area, uh, so we do a lot of public outreach. As the Home Energy Advisor, I help um, residents from all over the area to be more energy efficient at home. We also talk about beneficial electrification or how to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions by moving away from using natural gas in our homes and changing out to all electric homes. So we really talk to people about the energy efficiency of these new appliances. You can just see the light bulb going off in their eyes. It's like, oh, I finally get it now. I understand why this is important and why it's so worthwhile. We meet people where they are, whether they're interested in helping make their workplace more sustainable or they're interested in greening their community or their individual home. That's where we work with them. One way Actera works with people where they are is the Resilient Communities Program. Staff reaches out to inform and empower underserved groups about urgent climate-related issues. Climate Resilient Communities addresses inequalities when it comes to environmental justice. We go into um, low resource communities. So when it came to the Pacific Islander community, um, they like to have fun. They like to you know, talk business and have fun at the same time. What it tries to do is bridge that gap in terms of what is going on now and relating it to climate change and empowering and educating how they can make that connection and work towards solutions. And keep in mind the March date that there will be a drill in East Palo Alto. They plan their community meetings because they're the experts. They're the ones that know how to engage the community the best. To me, it's been very rewarding to be able to work in my own community, um, especially with an issue that affects us, all of us. In a community that sometimes feels forgotten. To be able to empower them and, and give them the tools and facilitate their growth is it, very rewarding. With the foundation of equity and resilience and advocacy along all of the programming we do, it is the thread that makes our work possible. As we look into the next 50, we want to be dedicating a lot of energy to food systems, to food waste, what we eat, how we cook what we eat, all of those things move together um, to the benefit of the planet if we make the right choices. Our Climate Friendly Cuisine Conference was attended by food service professionals from large companies, from small and large restaurants, from catering businesses. But here we are in the room full of people who are also committed to finding pathways to, towards sustainability. Bringing together members of the food service community, we're hoping that they will learn best practices to source products more sustainably, to reduce food waste, and to rely much more heavily on a plant-forward diet. You know, and uh, nut uh, butters and, and uh, milks. In the Bay Area, having transportation is almost as important as food. 
Actera's EV ambassadors host ride events to show how electric vehicles can be more than just a ride, they're a lifestyle. Actera is promoting the EV lifestyle because we believe that uh, clean transportation is really one of the biggest components in fighting climate change. We convene over 200 attendees who want to come and view electric vehicles on display, talk to the owners, and also, importantly, take test drives and ride-alongs in a wide variety of makes and models. Is this a round? Make a left. left? Yes. Okay. Woo! That's my first drive ever. Woo! Yeah. It's smooth. I love it. And we feel that in addition to it being a critical, critical factor in fighting climate change, EVs are simply more fun to drive. When it comes to bringing people together to work for a more sustainable future, Actera shows how the Bay Area can continue leading the way for another 50 years. Yeah, I'm already sold. Yep. We're providing solutions that people can adopt so that they feel like they can contribute to fighting this climate crisis. We're more powerful when we come together. So Actera is really about empowerment. Actera is here to support you. The fact that we're all in this room together and sharing our thoughts, our ideas, our encouragement, our successes, our failures, <coughs> this is how we're going to get it done. And now let's get to work and make it happen and do even more. The work of nonprofit organizations is bringing people together to learn, adapt, and come together to prioritize a sustainable world. From our homes to businesses and the outdoors, these actions are making the Bay Area bountiful.